これやってるビューですかテレビのシェアはい、では、Welcome to my channel today. I will merely introduce, introduce three kinds of water cooling plates with different process to you. But before we dive in, let me introduce to you my company. I represent Nanjing Metal Industrial Company Limited, a four service thermal management system provider that has been in the business of cooling solutions for new energy vehicles, new energy power generation, data centers, cold heat management, and related fields in the global market for over 10 years. Our team of experts is committed to providing a high quality thermal management systems. And we are proud to say that our customers certification speaks to itself. If you are in the de development stage of, the, of your project, we believe that our services could be a great help to you. At Metally, we have strong technology team to provide support, and we would be honored to assist you in any way possible. Now, Let's get into the good stuff. I'm going to introduce you to three different kinds of water cold plate with different processes that we offer. Okay. Okay, let's explain why liquid cooling is important in many applications, such as uh, electric electronics, industrial machinery, and automotive systems. Have you ever wondered why your computer or smartphone can get so hot? Well, it's because of all, all the electrical components inside that generate heat. And if that heat isn't dissipated properly, it can cause all sorts of problems like slow performance, crashes, and even permanent damage to your device. That's why liquid cooling comes in. By using a cooling liquid to transfer heat away from those components, it can be dissipated much more efficiently than with traditional air cooling method. This makes liquid cooling a popular choice of electronics like gaming PCs and high-end servers. But it's not just electronics that can be benefited from legal cooling. Industrial machinery like welding equip equipment and CNC machines generate a ton of heat too. And in some, ca and in some cases, that heat can even cause part to warp to wear out for naturally by using liquid cooling. These machines can operate at lower temperatures, which can improve their performance and extend their lifespan. And the last not forgot about automotive systems. Today's cars are filled with all sorts of electricity electronic components that generate heat from the energy management system to the infotainment system. Liquid cooling can help keep these components running smoothly, which can improve fuel efficiency and reduce emissions. So there you have it. Liquid cooling isn't just some fancy tech buzzword is an important tool that can help keep all sorts of equipment running smoothly and efficiently. Okay, now let's uh, discuss the benefits of liquid cooling over air cooling. 
such as uh, improve the efficiency and the lower noise levels. First, liquid cooling is generally more efficient than air cooling. This is because liquid is better at transferring heat than air, meaning that the liquid cooling system can keep your computer components cooler than air cooling system. This can be especially important if you are running a high performance system with components that generate a lot of heat, such as powerful CPU or graf graphics card. Another benefit of liquid cooling is that it can be quieter than air cooling. Air cooling system use fans to move air over your components, which can generate a lot of noise. Liquid cooling system, on the other hand, use pumps to circulate the liquid, which can be much more quieter, of course. This will still be some noise from the fans that are used to, to cool the radiator. Mm -hmm. But overall, a liquid cooling system can be much quieter than air cooling system. In addition to these benefits, liquid cooling can also be more socially appealing. Many liquid cooling systems use colorful liquid and tubing to create a unique and eye-catching look. This, this can be especially appealing if you are building a system for gaming or other purposes where aesthetics are important. However, it's worth nothing that liquid cooling system can be more expensive and more difficult to install than air cooling systems. You will need to purchase a specialized water block and pump, as well as radiator and fence to cool the liquid. Additionally, you will need to make sure that your case has enough space to accommodate the extra components. And of course, there's always the risk of leaks, which can damage your components if you are not careful. So. There, there you have it, the benefits of liquid cooling overall air cooling. If you are willing to invest the time and money to install a liquid cooling system, you can enjoy improved, eventually lower noise levels and virtually appealing system. <clears throat> Okay, now I'm going to provide an overview of the different types of liquid cooling plate and how they work. So there are three main types of liquid cooling plate. Uh, there are pressed, pressed copper tube cooling plate and vacuum brace cooling plate like this one. And the roll bound uh, cooling plate, you can also call the a uh, robot e evaporator of this one. Okay, the first one, uh, the pressed copper tube cooling plate is basically a base plate with the copper tubes pressed into it. The liquid flows through these tubes absorbing heat from the plate and any components that are in contact with it. The heated liquid is turned cold in a heat exchanger before being popped back into the cooling plate. The vacuum braced cold plate is, is made of the thin metal plate. Then are bonded together with channels or fins to increase surface area. The liquid flows through these channels, absorbing heat from the plate and any components that are in contact with them. The heated liquid is turned cold in a heat exchanger before being circulated back into the cooling plate. Lastly, the row-bound row cold plate is made up of two metal plates that are bonded together with channels or fins, similar to the other two types. Liquid flows through these channels, absorbing heat from the plate and compon components, and is 
the cloud in the heat exchanger before being recirculated back into the cooling plate. Okay, now you got it. A brief rundown of the three main types of cooling plate and how they work. Okay, uh, I'm going to introduce the three different kind of cooling plate one by one. Okay. Okay, so the first one, let's start with the uh, pressed copper tube cooling plate. Uh, I'm going to uh, introduce uh, what is the copper tube cooling plate and how it works. So basically, uh, press copper tube cooling plate is a piece of equipment that can help to cool things down. It's made up of a bunch of copper tubes. Uh, but this one is small because uh, this kind of pro product is kind of heavy. That's why I just grab a small one like this. And actually the bigger one, it has a uh, like bunch of copper tube. But for the small one, you can see it just have one channel right here. And uh, they way, uh, the way it works is pretty simple. When something gets too hot, it can be start to more function or even break down completely. That's where the cooling place comes in. The copper tubes inside the plate are really good at conducting heat, which means they can absorb the excess heat from whatever they are attached to. Once the heat is absorbed, it gets transferred through the copper tubes to different parts of the cooling system where it can be released into the air or some other medium that can carry the heat away. This helps to keep the thing being cooled at a safe and stable temperature, so it can be working properly. Overall, a press copper tube cooling plate is pretty simple, but important piece of equipment that helps to keep things from overheating. And now you know how it works. Uh, now we can discuss the advantages and disadvantages of this kind of cooling plate compared to the others. Press copper tube cooling plate are made by pressing a copper tube into an aluminum or copper plate to create channels for coolant flow. One big advantage is that copper is great conductor of heat, which means that this plate can eventually transfer heat from the source to the coolant. They are also really flexible in terms of customization. They can be made in different shapes and size to fit a very variety of applications. However, they do have some downsizes. Sides. Uh, first of all, they can be a bit pricey to manufacture, which may not make them the best choice for cost-sensitive applications. Additionally, they may not be as durable as other types of cooling plates. So, how do press copper tube cooling plates compare to other types of cooling plates? Well, let's take a look at a couple of samples. Vacuum, vacuum uh, brace cold plate are uh, made by bonding together layers of metal using a high, high temperature process. This creates a lightweight and durable plate with a large contact area between the coolant and plate, which, allow, which allows for efficient heat transfer. They are also highly custom, customized, and they can be made to fit specific applications. However, they can be more expensive than press copper tube. Cooling plates and may not be as efficient in terms of thermal conductivity. Rubon cold plates, on the other hand, are um, made by rolling together two layers of metal with a thin layer 
of Kulan between them. This creates a thin and lightweight plate with high thermal conductivity and a large contact area between the coolant and plate. They are really uh, they are relatively affordable and offer good good thermal performance. However, they may not be as durable as press copper to cooling plates and may require more frequent main maintenance. So there you have it. The pros and cons of pressed copper tube cooling plate compared to the other types of cooling plates as, as with any engineering decision, the choice between them will depend on the specific needs of your application, taking into account factors such as cost, thermal performance, and durability. durability. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, now uh, I'm going to show the examples of product that use this type of cooling plate and discuss how it has helped improve their performance. The first example we are going to look, I don't have picture or video with me, but I just can talk about it. The first example we are going to look at is computer CPUs. CP, CPUs generate a lot of heat, and if they get too hot, they can start to malfunction. That's where press copper tube cooling plates come in. By efficiently transferring heat away from the CPU and into the coolant, they can help keep the CPU operating and optimal temperatures, which improves performance and reduces the risk of damage. Other example is power electronics. In applications such as electro electric vehicles or solar inverters, power, power, uh, power electronics generate a lot of heat that needs to be dissipated. Press a copper tube cooling place can be used to intentionally remove this heat, which helps to improve the performance and reliability of, of the electronics. A third example is high power LED lighting. LED generate a lot of heat, which can reduce their efficiency and the lifespan. If it's not properly Managed press copper tube cooling plates can be used to efficiently remove this heat, which can help to improve the brightness and lifespan of LEDs. In all of these examples, press copper tube cooling plate have played a key key role in improving performance and reduce the risk of damage by. I welcome by intentionally transferring heat away from source and into the coolant. They help to keep the component and operating to optimal temperature. And this is not only improves performance, but also increases reliability and the lifespan. Okay, the second one we are going to talk this one, the the vacuum braced cooling plate. Okay, now, uh, like the first one, I'm going to explain what is the vacuum braced cooling plate and how it works. A vacuum, a vacuum braced copper cooling plate is made by bonding together layers of copper or aluminum using high temperature breathing process. During this process, a filler mantle is melted and drawn into the joint between the layers, creating a strong and durable bond. The result 
is a lightweight and efficient cooling plate that can effectively transfer heat away from the source and into the coolant. The larger contact area between the coolant and the plate allows to allows for efficient heat transfer, which helps to keep the component operating and optimally optimal temperatures. So how the, does a vacuum brace copper cooling, the vacuum brace, the cooling plate work? Well, let's take a look at an example. Uh, in, imagine you have a power elect, electronics that generators is a lot of heat and the heat is not properly managed it can reduce the efficiency and lifespan of the, the mold or even cause it to fail. A vacuum brace, uh, the vacuum braced cooling plate can be used to, which is this one, can be used to effectively remove the heat as the coolant flows through the plate. It absorbs the heat from the source and carries it away, keeping the model operating at optimal temperatures. In addition, in addition to their high thermal performance, vacuum brace, vacuum brace cooling plates are also high cost customization. Actually, it is customizable. They can be made in different shapes and size to fit a variety of applications, which may which makes them best solution for a wide range of cooling needs. Okay, now uh, let's discuss the the advantages and disadvantages of this kind of top type of vacuum vacuum cooling. Place. First, let's start with the advantages. One of the biggest advantages of vacuum brace cooling plate is their high thermal performance. The vacuum brazing process creates a strong and durable bond between the layers of the cooling plate, which allows for efficient heat transfer. This means that they can effect effectively remove heat from the source and keep it components operating at optimal temperatures. Another advantage is their versatility. Vacuum brace the cooling plate can be made in different shapes and sizes to fit a wide range of applications. This made them a great option for cost custom cooling solutions. However, there are also some disadvantages to consider. One of the main disadvantages is the cost. The vacuum brazer cooling plate is more expensive than other types of, of cooling plates, which can make vacuum brazer cooling plate more expensive as well. Another one is their weight. Vacuum brace cooling plate can be heavier than other types. You can see this is the small one and it is it is already feels heavy. Lastly, the vacuum uh, brazing process can be more complex and require more specialized equipment than other bonding methods which can make it more difficult and manufacture vacuum brace cooling place. So there you go. A few advantages and disadvantages of vacuum brace cooling place compa compared to the other types of cooling plate. While they offer high thermal performance and was what performance. They can also be more expensive, heavier, and require more specialized manufacturing processes. It's, 
it's important to with these factors when cons considering which types of cooling fluid is best for your application. Okay, just like the last one, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the samples of the vacuum cooling plate. The one example is, is the product that uses vacuum breeze cooling plate is a power electronics. Electronics module. This module generates a lot of heat, which can reduce their efficiency and the lifespan, or over cause them to fail. But by using a vacuum brace cooling plate, the heat can be effect effectively removed from the module, allowing it to operate at optimal temperatures. A uh, vacuum brace cooling plate are also commonly used in auto automotive industry. For example, they can be used to cool down the battery pack in an electric vehicle. This helps to prevent overheating and damage to the battery, which can improve the performance and lifespan of vehicle. In the aerospace industry, vacuum brace cooling plates are used to cool down various components such as uh, vionics and electro electro electrical equipment. This can improve their performance and reduce the risk for failures due to overheating. So as you can see, vacuum brace cooling plates are using a wide range of products and applications to improve performance and prevent overheating by effectively removing heat from the source. They can help to keep components operating to optimal temperature, temperature which can, hi, welcome, which can improve efficiency and lifespan. If you have any questions, you can leave the message to me. Okay, now we are talking about the last one the row-bound cooling plate. Explain what the row-bound cooling plate and how it works. You can see the, you can see this one is the row-bound cooling plate. And you can also uh, call, call it the row-bound evaporator. A row-bound evaporator plate is a type, is a type of heat exchanger that is commonly used in refrigeration systems. It is made by rebonding two metal layers together with a series of rice fins in between. The two metal layers are typically made of aluminum, but can, but can also be made of, of other metals such as copper. The way a rebound evaporator plate works is by providing a large surface area for heat transfer. As refrigerant flows through the plate, it absorbs heat from the surrounding environment, causing it to eva evaporate. The evaporation process cools down the surrounding air or liquid, which can be used to cool down other components or spaces. The rise of fins in between the mental layers of the robot evaporator plate increase the surface area of the plate, which allows a greater heat transfer efficiency. The use of aluminum in the plate also makes it lightweight and easy to integrate into refrigeration systems. One advantage of row-bound evaporator plate is their cost effective effectiveness. 
the row bonding process is a relatively simple and low cost manufacturing process, which makes row bond evaporator plate an affordable option for many refrigeration applications. But there are also some limitations to cons consider. Robot evaporator plates have lower thermal performance compared to the other types of evaporator plates, such as tube and foam plate or, or evaporators. They also have limitations in terms of custom customization as their design and shape are more rest restrict rest Tricked due to the row bonding process. Overall, row bond evaporator plates are the cost effects effective and lightweight option for cooling in refrigeration systems. While they may not offer a same level of, of thermal performance or customization options as other types of evaporator plates. They are still a great option for many refrigeration applications where cost and weight are important factors. Okay, now let's discuss the good things and the bad things of this type of cooling plate compared to the others. One advantage of robot evaporator plates is their cost effectiveness. As I mentioned earlier, the row, the row bonding process is simple and low cost manufacturing process, which makes the row bond evaporator place an affordable option for many ref, refrigeration applications. Another advantage of row bond evaporator place is their lightweight con, con, Construct, construction, this makes them easy to integrate into the refrigeration systems and also reduces the overall weight of the system. However, robot evaporator plates also have some limitations to consider. One disadvantage is their lower thermal performance com compared to other types of in place, such as the press, the press cool, uh, press copper tube cooling plate, and the the vacuum braced cooling plate. Robot evaporator plates have a, has another disadvantages, that is, they are lower resistance to corrosion compared to to other types of evaporator plates. This means that they may not be suitable for use in harsh environments or with certain types of refrigerate rates. Overall, a uh, robust evaporator place are a cost effective and lightweight option for cooling in refrigeration systems but they may not offer the same level of thermal performance, customization, or corrosion resistance as other types of evaporator plates. It's important to consider the specific requires of your application before choosing which, which type of co-plate to use. Okay, now uh, I'm going to show the examples of the, the robot evaporator for you. The first one is in refrigeration system used in the transportation industry, such as re refrigerated trucks and trailers. Robot ev evaporator plates are commonly, com commonly used in these systems due to their light, lightweight con con 
traction and cost if effectiveness. They help maintain a consistent temperature inside the refrigerated compartment, ensuring that goods being transported stay fresh and safe for consumption. Okay, another sample is in the manufacturing of household refrigerators and freezers. Ruban evaporator plates are often used in these applications due to their low cost and the easy of in inter integration into the design. design. They help cool the interior compar compartment of the refrigerator or freezer. Keeping food and beverages are at the desired temperature. Ruban evaporator plates are also used in commercial refrigeration systems, such as those found in supermarkets and restaurants. They are commonly used in display cases and walking coolers to maintain consistent temperature and prevent spoilage or food products. In the automotive industry, robot evaporator plates are used in air conditioner systems to help cool the passenger com compartment of vehicles. They are an effective and uh, afford affordable solution for cooling air inside the car, ensuring passenger comfort during the hot summer month. Overall, robot evaporator plates are a uh, are versatile and cost-effective solution for cooling applications in various industries. They offer improved performance in terms of maintaining a consistent temperature and widely used due to their affordability and easy of integration into their design of various products. Okay, now <clears throat> I'm going to compare the three different cooling plate types together. Let's talk about the press copper to cooling plate. As we discussed before, these plates are made by press copper tubes into an aluminum base plate. They offer high thermal conductivity and excellent heat transfer performance, making them a great option for high performance applications, such as computer cooling. Next, let's look at the vacuum raised cooling plates. This plate are made by brazing. This kind of plate. Uh, is made by a uh, brazing aluminum base plate, creating a strong bond between the two materials. This is type of cooling place offer excellent thermal conductivity and durability. Make them ideal for use in industrial or aerospace applications. Finally, let's talk about the robot evaporator place. These plates are made by bonding aluminum or copper sheet together, creating a channel for water to flow through. 
They are lightweight and cost effective, but may not offer the same level of thermal performance as other types of water cooling plates. When, when deciding uh, which type of water cooling plate to use, there are several factors to consider. First, consider the specific requirements of your application. If you need a high thermal conductivity and excellent heat, heat transfer performance, press a copper to cooling plate may be the best option. If durability is the top priority, vacuum breeze cooling place may be the way to go. For more cost-effective application, robot evaporator place may be the best choice. Another factor to consider the materials being used. Copper has ex excellent thermal conductivity and is often used in high performance cooling application. Aluminum, in the other hand, is lightweight and affordable, but may not offer the same level of thermal conductivity as copper. In summary, there are several types of water cooling plates uh, available. Each with their, their own advantages and disadvantages. When choosing which type to use, consider the specific requirements of your application and the materials being used and your budget. Okay, now uh, we already talked about those three uh, different kind of cooling plate. May we can talk about the future development in liquid cooling plate technology. Let's start with the current research and development in liquid cooling plate technology. Liquid cooling plates has been around for many years and are commonly used in various industri industries such as electronics, aerospace, and automotive. However, with the increasing demand for, demand for high performance systems and more efficient cooling solutions, researchers are constantly exploring new materials and design to improve liquid cooling plate technology. One area of research is the development of new materials with high thermal conductivity. Copper has long been a popular choice for liquid cooling plates due to its excellent thermal conductivity, but researchers are exploring new materials such as graphene and diamond to further improve thermal performance. Other area is of research is the optimization of the design and liquid cooling place. Researchers are employing new shapes and size of cooling channels, as well as new manufacturing processes to improve heat transfer performance and reduce manufacturing costs. In addition to these areas of research, there is also growing interest in the use of additive manufacturing, such as 3D printing for liquid cooling plate production. This technology allows for more complex and customized designs as well as faster production times and reduce waste. Overall, the future of liquid cooling plate technology looks promising with ongoing research and development in materials, in materials 
design and manufacturing process. Hi, welcome, Roses. As high performance systems continue to demand more efficient cooling solutions, we um, ex uh, expect to see continued ad advancements in vehicle cooling plate technology in the years to come. Okay, now uh, may you want to know about how they might impact industries and use the liquid cooling plates. As we mentioned earlier, liquid cooling plates are commonly used in various industries, such as electronics, aerospace, and automotive. Any advancements in this technology could have significant impacts on the performance, costs, and the efficiency of these industries. For example, in the electronics industry, they will put in place are often used to call high performance computer processors and graphics cards. As these components become more powerful and generate more heat, the demand of more efficient cooling sol solutions also increases. Advancements in liquid cooling plates technologies such as the use of new materials with higher thermal conductivity or more optimized design also lead to faster and more reliable computer performance. In the aerospace industry, later cooling plates are used to cool surgical components such as aircraft engines and uh, avionics. Improved liquid cooling plate technology could, could lead to increased reliability and safety in aircraft systems, as well as potential weight saving through more efficient cooling solutions. In the automotive industry, big cooling plates are used to cool engine components such as the engine block, cylinder hands, and the transmission. Improved liquid cooling plate technology could lead to more efficient energy performance, increase fuel, fuel efficiency, and reduce the emissions. Overall, advancements in liquid cooling plate technology could have significant impacts on a wide range of industries. From improving computing performance to increasing, increasing safety in aerospace system to reduce emissions in the automotive industry. As research and development in this technology continues, we can, ask, we can expect to see even more benefits and applications emerge in the future. Okay, uh, now we can um, discuss the environment in the environmental impact of liquid cooling plates and potential improvement that could be made to reduce waste and improve sustainability. Liquid cooling plates are used in various industries to call high performance components and prevent overheating. While they provide an effective solution for cooling, they also have potential environmental impact. One of the main environmental impacts of liquid cooling plates 
is the use of water as cooling medium. Water is a finite resource and excessive use and disposal can have negative impacts on its ecosystems and human health. Additionally, the production and disposal of liquid cooling plates can also result in waste and, and pollution. To address these environmental impacts, improvements can be made in both the production and use of liquid cooling plates. One, poten one potential improvement is the use of recycled materials in the production process, which can reduce waste and energy consumption. Another improvement could be the development of more efficient cooling solutions and require less water and use more sus sustainable cooling fluids. Flues, I'm sorry. For, for example, some, com some companies are exploring the use of nine tox toxic better groundable cooling fluids that can be recycled and refused. Additionally, efforts can be made to reduce the amounts of water using liquid cooling system through the use of closed loop systems and water efficient designs. This design can reduce the amount of water needed for cooling and minimize the need of the disposal. Overall, while liquid, while liquid cooling plates provide an effective solution for cooling high performance components, it's important to consider the environmental impacts of their production and use. Improvement can be made in the use of recycled materials the development of more sustainable cooling flows and the reduction of water consumption to create more sustainable and environmentally friendly labor cooling solutions. Okay, today we are mainly talking about the three different kind of liquid cooling plate uh, with different technical process processes. But actually, we have not only those three kind of liquid cooling plate. If you want to know, if you want to know more uh, information about our product, you can, you can go to our website or our shop to find the product that uh, match your requirements. Okay, you may want to know, uh, we can review these three kind of products a little bit. Okay, the first one is the first one is this one. The copper tube, the copper tube cooling plate. This plate is basically in basically a base plate which copper tubes press into it. You can you can see it clearly. The liquid flows through these tubes absorbing heat from the plate and any components that are in contact with it. The heated liquid is then cooled in, the, in a 
hit its tender before being popped in back into the cooling plate. Like this way. Okay, here's the second one. This one is the vacuum braced cooling plate. This plate is made made up for thin metal plates that are bonded together with channels, because the channels is inside of the plate. That's why you cannot see it. The liquid flows through these channels inside absorbing heat from the plates and any components that are in con contact with them. The heated liquid, liquid is then caught in a heat exchanger before being recirculated back into the cooling plate. Let's see the... Here is the in and the out that they will start here and go through the plate and out here. Okay, the last one is the roll bound cooling plate. Right here, the roll bound cooling plate is made up for two material plates that are bonded together. It is thin, you cannot see it, but it's two pieces of clap. Similar to the other two types, liquid flows through these channels like here, absorbing the heat from the plate and components and is then caught in a, in a heat exchanger before being re re recirculated back into the cooling plate. And you can see the in and out that is right here. They will go this way. Compared to the other two uh, different cold plates, this one, if you don't have that high the, uh, budget, you can choose this one if it can match your requirement. But actually for the, the large power battery cooling, I recommend uh, this cooling, this copper cooling plate, the plastic copper cooling plate, and the vacuum brace copper cooling plate. Okay, finally, uh, okay, at the end, we can talk about the, the uh, uh, how, how, how do you choose the cooling plate for your applications? There are, uh, you can see this several types of water cooling plates are available and each with their own advantages and disadvantages. And the main factors to choosing which type to use, just consider the specific requirements of your application and also the material and your budget.
Okay, thank you guys. Is anybody watching? If you have any questions, you can ask me right now or you can send a message to me. Welcome, or you want to see any of the different plates, you can let me know. Okay, this one is, is the copper tube, press a copper tube, cooling plate. It have high performance in the in the different area. And this one is vacuum braced cooling plate. Here, the, here is the in and out left. And the last one, roll down cooling plate. This one is, uh, this side is flat, and this side is roll down, roll down. Okay, if you don't have any questions, I'm going to finish the live, the live stream today. Thank you guys for watching. Have a nice day. Thank you.